Hello everybody, my name is JCW and welcome back to the Maxcape speedrun series. After hitting 200 mil on my level 3, I set a new goal for myself. Maxing total level on a brand new account in the shortest gameplay time possible. There are absolutely zero restrictions, so I can do whatever it takes to achieve my ultimate goal. Maxing total within 35 days of playtime. Ever since my last episode, I'm happy to say that we've spent 100 hours on these 4 tiles mining the same 4 rocks and it was a great feeling. Especially after being forced to do Logout Slayer for hundreds of hours and still not even being 99 Slayer, being able to log in and drop a 3 to 4 hour session without logging out felt great. A lot of progress was finally had. Let's jump in and see how much I actually remembered to record this time. Starting off, here's the first level, 87 Mining. Before I exactly jump into some large dopamine level ups, just a quick refresher on what exactly I'm doing here. This method is called 3 tick granite, or commonly referred to as 3T4G, meaning 3 ticks, 4 granites. This method is one of the most ancient skilling methods, as it has been the best mining XP an hour for nearly 9 years. It's RuneScape, so naturally the game should always get easier as time goes on. However, granite, for the most part, has remained the same minus a few QOL updates since it was discovered back in the day nearly 9 years ago. It's still the same old method it always has been. Start a 3 tick cycle, mine the same 4 rocks. It's so cool in my opinion that this method is still so relevant after all the updates throughout all the years. Anyway, you guys are here to see some epic gains, so let's jump into 88 mining where the level up doesn't even phase me. Followed by 89. And then the big 9-0. From here on out, it's pretty safe to say that I'm able to maintain 120k an hour at all times, and the match XP looks pretty good as well. We're well over 30k in every clip. May or may not have lied, but slightly under 120k an hour now, at least here's level 91 mining. And everyone's favorite meme, 92 being half of 99, we're now halfway there. A couple of you guys maybe wanted to get into 3T4G. I know I spent a lot of time streaming this on Twitch because I love streaming mining, and I've heard a lot of people saying they couldn't get it down despite really wanting to. So let me explain a couple things real quick. We get a chance to mine an ore in a cycle every 3 ticks. But one of the easiest ways to screw up, especially when learning at a lower level, is to not know when you're off cycle. At a lower level mining, it's still very possible to go 2 or even 3 rocks without a successful mine, while still being on cycle. At 99, however, it's pretty obvious to see when you're off cycle. Thankfully though, I know most of you guys aren't 99 mining and I have a tip for you. This first clip is going to be somebody who is on cycle. Notice how on the first knife log, the animation starts at the same time he starts walking to the next rock. It's very important to click the next rock the moment you hit the knife log. However, in this clip, notice how my character starts the animation and then walks after. It's noticeably not at the same time. When this happens, it creates an infinite loop where you're always mining the rock on the wrong tick. It makes it impossible to successfully mine. There is an easy fix to this. Whenever you are off cycle, or even if you feel like you're off cycle, all you have to do is knife, log, rock, and then knife, log the same rock again. This puts you back on cycle without having to pause or stop your brain for any moments. It's brainless. Finally, yes, long term you want to drop your ores between mines, but don't be afraid to just mine and then drop a full inventory during your first hour. Doing this, you'll make less mistakes and you'll understand the 3 tick cycle quicker, and overall making the learning process much easier and less frustrating. Just start dropping between rocks once you feel you got the hang of it. Good luck to anyone trying this, and let's head back to the gains. I don't know why I seem to get every pet that I possibly can, but right before getting 93 mining, I got the rock golem. I barely even got these on my main, because granite is such a rare chance to drop them, it's about a 1 in 50 mil XP chance. I also got the beaver and squirrel pet, and who knows what other pets I would have gotten if I did traditional methods. Because if you remember, I did methods such as artifact and drift net for thieving and fishing, and it wasn't even possible to get a pet doing that. So the fact I still managed to get 3 pets while doing this is quite RNG impressive in my opinion. Anyway, here's 93 mining. Looking at my XP tracker for magic, it looks like I also recently just got 97 magic. The first magic level during the mining grind. Unfortunately though, it looks like I forgot to record. I did however, remember to record 94 mining. And here's 95. 
Level 96 Mining is now here. Followed by 97. And one level left, 98. Oops, that was 98 Magic. I meant 98 Mining. Now I know 99.9% .9 of you have no idea what's going on in the top left corner, but let me explain this real quick. Around 95 Mining, I was getting bored out of my mind by only playing one client. So I needed to do something on the side to keep myself motivated so I wouldn't log out. So I ended up loading one of my RS3 alts, but thankfully for you guys, all of the level up clips are without it in the way, so need not worry. I did have fun alting during mining though. It was sometimes boring doing 10 hours of clicking only in the same one boxed client, and adding a second box client to click generally made it more fun and doable. And here's a skill I'm about to finish that I'm sure many of you forgot I even had to do. I'm finally finishing 99 smithing through burning granite rocks. And just a few hours later, 99 mining. At this point, we're really nearing the final stretch of the account. So now it's time to do a couple small random things. First things first, I had 500k farming XP left until 99 and I've had this for quite a while. So I'm making my way to the GE to do some fire bond. This is a method that I've never done in my entire life. So I spent about an hour learning it on an alt, and then I just decided to hop in and do it. Since I only had to do about 50 minutes on my speedrun account, I could not be bothered mastering this for the extra 5% or so XP an hour that I could have gotten with more practice. But man, I kid you not guys, I love this method. It was a lot of fun. It might look like a lot going on, but basically all I'm doing is lighting logs just like a normal player. Except, in between the 4 ticks of downtime, I'm trying to cook 2 kabama lambs between the time for the next log to life. So essentially, my firing XP is the same of a normal player, but my cooking is 0 time. If you're wondering why I'm scold, it's because I'm in a PvP role to help me with my banking. There's less population and low ping here, so my banks are more consistent to not lag. Being less than 40k to 99, I'm not sure if this was the right call, but I did decide to end fire making early to see if I can zero time it more later on. Because now, as the next small thing we have to do, is my favorite content, questing. Turns out, we need the entire desert questline to unlock TOA, so that was slightly poor planning on my end, but it's whatever at this point, I'm just really excited to be nearly done. Following up that quest, I'm now completing Itchlaren's Little Helper. Then I had to do contact, which I don't remember how to kill the boss, so I brought range, which sucked against it. I also forgot my prayer pause and such, because I kind of assumed this would be a quick 5 second boss fight, so that's why you see me flicking rigor. Contact is now being complete, and then there's one quest remaining. This whole desert quest line I have never done on any of my accounts. Quest Cape is one of the few caves I've actually never had in my entire life. So, it's my first time going into this boss fight, and I had Torben stuff going on, so I figured it would be easy. If you look closely at my inventory, you'll notice that I once again forgot Super Restores, so just take quick note of that. Other than that though, the fight was relatively easy. I do have a bad habit of kind of falling asleep during quest fights because I'm so used to AFKing them, so this fight was closer than I care to admit because I lazily didn't dodge a few easily dodgeable special attacks. However, in the end, we did survive, and the final quest of this account was complete. Now, there's only one more actual grind that I have to do, but before we get there, there's one more small thing. I have to get higher cooking, I'm only level 91. So let's make our way to Rogue's Den. For this method, all you gotta do is use the Kawam Bam on the fighter while holding down 2 or spacebar. It's pretty basic stuff once you get the timing down. Bearing in mind that you click twice every 0.6 seconds, it's quite hard to be tick perfect, but in this clip I'm making this way harder than it needs to be. And here I am hitting the halfway mark, 92 cooking. After that, I made my life a lot easier by not being stubborn and moving my inventory. You weren't always allowed to move the inventory, and this has been in the game for a while, but this is my first time utilizing it. I cannot stress how good this was for cooking. At this point, I was basically able to do this with my eyes closed. Here I am hitting level 94. If any of you are debating wanting to do one tick kawams, I promise you that this is probably one of the easiest tick minute methods that I've ever done. 
So, after going to bed at 94 cooking, and coming home from work the next day, motivated as heck to stream the rest of cooking, I realized something very soon after going live. Notice how I'm scold and wearing 700 mil worth of gear from the quest that we just did. Well, remembering that the reason that I was in a PvP world is because I liked the less lag of opening and closing a bank, I figured that this shouldn't hurt at all, since when I got here, I was not in a PvP world, and I waited until I was at the safe bank to log in. PvP worlds are mostly free for all and people can attack people wherever. However, most banks are safe. So naturally, I assumed this bank was safe. I didn't double check because I mean, it's a bank. Why would I have any doubts about it not being safe? And after not even being live for 5 minutes, I learned very quickly that Rogue's Den Bank is not like any other bank. You can still be attacked in it. So let's see what happens to all my gear. And oh my god guys, I cannot believe how close I was to losing bank. I know my clicks there were a legitimate disaster, but I think it was genuine shock, panic, and confusion. Because like I said, I had no idea it was possible to attack somebody at a bank in a PvP world. But thankfully, we didn't lose 700 mil. However, we did lose something worse. Two minutes on our speedrun account. Let my mistakes be the reason that you guys never follow somebody onto a PvP world in Rogue's Den. I'm sure I'm not the first person to be here. I'm not usually the type of guy to flame PKers, but I think we can all agree that I got super freaking lucky at how bad that guy was. I think if anyone with even half of a brain attacked me, I would have easily lost my Torba. So thank you to whoever that was. So here we are, after high blood pressure, accepting flame from my chat since apparently knowing that Rogue's Den is a PvP area is common knowledge, and relief of banking my stuff, I managed to get back to finish my cooking grind. Here I am hitting level 95. Here's level 96. And then 97 cooking. Now, getting about 2 mil off 99 cooking is a good time for me to stop. For those who missed it, it is possible to gain cooking XP during Slayer. There's a little method I like to call cooking range. And I'm leaving myself 2 mil cooking XP left over to see if I can do the rest of it with this method. I have no way of knowing exactly which task I'll be doing to 99, and I need to ensure that I finish all other 99 combats before I move on to range. So leaving myself 2 mil cooking XP just to be safe, I fully expect to come back to Rogue's Den. So now that 97 cooking is out of the way, let's discuss our stats and what's left for the series. On the left are my stats from last episode, and on the right is my current stats. Just to let you guys know exactly how close we are to being done, we are keeping a cooking and fire making close by to get passively, along with Millie and Mage. So the only real stats we have left to do is 95 to 99 Slayer and 88 to 99 Range. EHP wise, this is only like 54 hours left. Now, the unfortunate reality is that since we get to do Logout Slayer, those 54 hours of EHP will probably be about 120 hours of playtime, including being logged out. So here's the progress from last episode. And with all of that being said, I believe we have a date that we're finishing this series. So make sure to tell your parents, work, significant others, or whoever can hold you back that you are busy on March 26th to watch JCW finish his Max Cape on Twitch. I don't know any other information about it such as time or what skill I'll be doing at the very end, so I'll release something when the date is closer to keep you guys updated. Anyway kings and queens, as always, TY for watching, and I will see you all next time in our final episode with the Maximum Cape, along with our total time played. So feel free to comment down below as your guesses as to what the exact day and hours played will be. Peace out.